Today I'll be testing a number of antennas for 433 megahertz, uh, also known as the 70 centimeter band. And I'm going to use them all on the same unit and walk away with it and see when I lose signal. So in total I've got seven antennas that I'm going to try and I'll just introduce you now to them. The first one is a center loaded quarter wave vertical. It's got a magnetic base and it needs a ground plane which I'll provide by placing it on an old chassis. Um, that should be a, a su sufficient enough ground plane to, uh, to couple the other field to it. So I'll be walking out in the park behind me and whenever I lose signal I know how far this antenna gets me. The second antenna is a PCB, what looks like a J-Pole antenna, uh, a design that I found on eBay. Um, it only costs a dollar or so, um, but I was just very interested to see how this performs. Um, I'll leave a link to the uh, page where you can find these uh, down below. But uh, yeah, I'm just curious to see if this is a, uh, a revolutionary new design or simply something you don't want to waste your time and money on. The third antenna I'm going to test is a helical antenna. Um, it's for 433 megahertz. Um, don't get fooled by sizes. In this case, it's all wound up, and I've done it so that it is resonant for the band and uh, and all working. The fourth one is a sleeve dipole, and you'll often recognize those because they have a, a slightly wider base. The sleeve is actually going over the coax inside. At one point, the coax will come out, the center core, and then the sleeve wraps back on itself with some distance. And the distance, the greater the distance, the better. Um, this is claimed as being 6 dBi gain, so I'd be really interested to see how well this performs. The fifth antenna is a PCB dipole I designed myself. Um, it's balanced for 433 megahertz. Um, I hope I tuned it well and uh, made some measurements with an antenna analyzer to get all the elements tuned to the right length. And this is a slightly different antenna than your normal quarter wave vertical or your monopole. Whereas with the, 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 the monopole or the quarter wave vertical, you have to make your own ground plane. Dipole antennas work that they have the ground plane with the radiating elements all in one go. So when done properly, this antenna, uh, I think, should outperform uh, the quarter wave verticals. So let's see how they go. The, the sixth antenna is effectively nothing more than a piece of wire. In another video I showed that the length of this wire is, is quite critical. Um, I've tuned it to 16 centimeters and that is measured from when you insert it, in this case, in the SMA connector. You start measuring that distance from the moment the wire clears the outer surface of the shield basically. That's where it protrudes out and that's where you start measuring. Um, so this is a 16 centimeter often known as a monopole. Um, it's just a wire, but tuned to a specific length. Often you'll find these antennas being shipped with uh, Motinos that I'll be using inside these little boxes for doing all the hard work and sending out the, uh, the packets. So this is just a simple piece of wire, but be interesting to see how well or not that performs. The seventh antenna is a dual band helical antenna for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, I'm a licensed ham operator and I can use those bands with much higher power than what we're using today. Um, I've got this antenna uh, sometimes on my car. One of its main benefits is that you can use it to transmit quite a bit of power through it. I think these are rated to 100 watts and that makes them ideal for being robust, uh, unobtrusive and uh, being able to withstand at higher power. I've had to make a few adjustments here to actually mount them properly on the uh, on the unit. I'll show you. So this is the unit that we'll be using, and I'll have to add it up like this. Again, this is a um, a quarter wave vertical. It's it's trimmed. It's a, it's a helical inside. You do need a ground plane for that, but on the car you would have this mounted flush on whatever uh, roof or body of your car you're going to be using. The eighth and last antenna that I'll be testing today is a whip antenna. Um, I paid about $20 for this one. It'll be interesting to see how it works. Um, 
and whether it's yeah feasible at all to use for low power telemetry projects. Um, again, this is also a quarter way vertical, so you need a ground plane for these antennas. The ground station that I'll be using today is housed in this little uh, container. Um, I just feed it with a 12 volt battery. Inside it's got a Motino, and the antenna that I'll be using is the, the small, the slim uh, uh, helical antenna. The ground station is now powered with the 12 volt battery. And just for for, for a first test, I'm just using the normal uh, thin uh, helical antenna. It's the same one as on the base station. And when I turn that on, I'm not sure if you can see that, when I turn on the power to it, it'll show me uh, a yellow LED every time it starts sending out a packet. When a packet is being received by the ground station, the ground station will acknowledge that packet and then resend it back at full power to the mobile unit. When that packet is received, I'm hearing a little beep in here. I'm not sure if you can hear that. It should be transmitting now. So that's the sound that I'm hearing. And every time I hear that beep, I know that I've received a packet successfully and means that I'm still in contact with the base station. When I walk further out, I stop hearing those beeps and that's when I know I've gone to the edge of, of the reception there. To make that edge of the reception area um, convenient in size, uh, as you can see, I've, I may have 200 meters, 300 meters behind me, um, but I'm gonna use an attenuator on the signal so that when I send out the initial packet to the base station, the signal is so weak that it is just barely getting out. And I expect that range to be around maybe 30, 40 meters or so. Um, I've got a couple of attenuators here that I'll be testing. Um, initially, I'll be testing with a 30 dB attenuator. 30 dB means that the output signal from this radio will be a thousand times less power. And that will still be picked up by the base station. And then when the base station transmits at full power, I should be definitely able to hear that the base station is not attenuating its signal. Okay, so we've um, done our measurements. This is the base station. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see, there's a few yellow pegs there in the ground. So we'll just go and walk towards each one of them and see where they ended up being placed. The first one here, I'm not sure if you can read that. That is our, uh, the thin helical, that is Hmm, what I thought was going to be a good ground station antenna was actually the worst performer, so that's interesting. The second one really close to it is the J-Pole PCB antenna. And uh, that's interesting because they uh, they both are the worst performers. And we go further this way, we have here the, I called it a fat helical. And that is the uh, antenna that I have on my car sometimes. It's the, uh, the multi-band for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Oh, slightly better. Here is a uh, center-loaded vertical. And um, that's the antenna with the, uh, the magnetic base. And as you can see from the, uh, the ground station, it's not it's not too impressive, uh, especially if you consider that when we go further, we have some more antennas. The very furthest one is the one with the, um, the four element Yagi. So here's the next one. Here we have a uh, sleeve dipole. Performs a lot better, um, but still not the 
the best antenna, even though they promote this antenna as having 6 dpi, which is, uh, well, it's not really working. Here. Here's the wire antenna, and this is the uh, antenna that uh, the CAPTCHA is here on. This is a piece of wire here, the length, and it perform better than uh, what you will find. Here are the last two contenders that I uh, published the results for on the page here. Um, the first one is the PCB dipole. That's the antenna that I made. So I'm very happy with the results actually, because it seems to do uh, quite well. Um, and the next one is a, uh, that's the longest antenna of them all. It's the, uh, the long helical whip. Also a multi-band antenna for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, it's another one that I use on my uh, on my handheld radios, and uh, yeah, it's it's probably one of the more expensive antennas. Um, I'm not sure if this is what you want for your project, but when you look at it in in a total scheme of things, it, it does give you the um, the furthest range.